on the way back to Galilee. See, I've been practicing and know how to say it now. <laughs> Galilee. And we Lisa. Hi. Good morning, Lisa. <laughs> now you're shy. Jerry, you're quiet. What's wrong? <laughs> I'm tired. I'm well, I'm Lisa. Tired too. Lisa, Jerry kidnapped me from Galilee yesterday. <laughs> and brought me to a beautiful campground. She's cheating, she's not walking, she's driving everywhere. <laughs> Thanks Lisa and Jerry oh, for God, taking me done. off the Any streets. Time. And and now we go back. I, I was did. almost in temporary, but now I have to go back and actually do the walk. So thanks very much. You're welcome. Sit, happy uh, travels. Welcome, happy travels. <laughs> and I'm on the road again, literally, <laughs> leaving Galbally and heading for Tipperary. I hear it's a long, long way to get there. On the main road, yeah. you come to a clean hotel on the left. It's closed down, Good. go there about a mile over the road, and there's a pub there again that's closed. I go left there. And that takes you up the Christ the King, down over the hill into Tipperary. Sounds perfect. That's where you want to go, yeah. That's where you want to go. Thank you very much, Nate. Oh. Well, in Canada, we have hockey rinks in our backyards and some front yards in the winter. In Ireland, they make soccer pitches. They take their soccer very seriously. This is uh, actually just after the campground in Bellina, where I stayed last night. And I learned from Chris, the owner, Bali is the anglicized version of Balia. And Balia means town. And that's why all the towns are Bali, Bali Organ, Bali Landers. And so I'm learning a bit of Irish along the way. Ooh, swanky. The Aherlo Hotel. Okay, bye Jimmy. Bye Seamus. Take care. Thanks. See you later. So great to meet a fellow member of the uh, online, the Facebook uh, Ireland Way group. That's fabulous. He says, you hiking the Ireland Way? You from Canada? <laughs> what? <laughs> funny to be recognized. Anyway, I have an amazing story about this particular spot. This is the Christ the King statue. I have a book, a hardcover picture book that my dad gave my brother Martin when he had just been back to Ireland for the first time since we emigrated. Uh, he gave it to him when he was a teenager and it says in the front of the book, Merry Christmas Martin, may this help you forever remember your time in Ireland. And this statue's on the front. And I uh, somehow pilfered that book, sorry Martin, <laughs> when I left home. And it's always been on my bookshelf. And for the last, oh, 10 years or so, it has had a prominent spot in our bathroom reading basket. Well, this has been a very pleasant hiking day altogether. Started out with the generosity and fun of Lisa and Jerry's company, who drove me to the campground and then back to Galbally this morning. Then, oh, sunshine! We've got sunshine and just a few clouds today. Perfect weather. Then, meeting Jimmy and doesn't he give me his number to call him if I need anything when I'm in the Tipperary area? Tipperary area? That's just so appreciated and makes me feel so welcome and at home. So thank you very much, Jimmy and Lisa and Jerry. The Irish are generous, fun and kind-hearted people. Back in 1990, Gordon and I were cycling through here on our honeymoon. And we stopped our bikes and took our pictures in front of the sign. Welcome to Tipperary. 
You've come a long way. Caution, busy road ahead. Whew, well that only lasted a few minutes on the highway, which is a little unnerving. <laughs> Just want to say that I'm really grateful for the Ireland Way online community. If it weren't for another uh, hiker to be on the Ireland Way next year, Joss, who was in the area doing a road trip this year and gave me the advice to bring a reflective vest saying that a lot of people wear them on the roads. Wow, that was really valuable advice. Thanks so much, Joss. Cross the N24 again, back to the left side. Go under the tunnel and it'll put you on this nice quiet road into town. Only about a half a more kilometer to go. Well, I'm quite happy with my little room here in Ochnasheen Guest House. I have to say though, it seems to be a little messy. I mean, what happened here? Well, here's the dirty laundry. There's a machine downstairs. My sleeping bag has been permanently damp for 12 days, so I'm trying to dry that out. That's my one clean t-shirt. Uh, that's my tent, also damp. My fly, also damp. Ground sheet, damp. The inside of my food bag was damp because I put away my teacup while it still had a little bit of moisture in it. My sleeping bag, pad, damp. Anyway, this will suit me just fine. Looking forward to my zero. Jimmy, in a very special place. So, so this now, is St. Berhardt's Coil. St. Berhardt's Coil. In the Glen of Aherlo. It's very, very special because you have all these stone crosses, which are probably 7th century. Um, you know, time of St. Patrick and all that carved here and all placed into this wall. And this is a national monument. Here we have a coil, um, St. Berhardt's Coil. And this is a kilin where unbaptized babies were buried. Right, a uh, very special place. Um, we talk softly um, and we tread lightly when we go to these places. Right. All right, second historical stop, Jimmy, is Hanbeg Church. Hanbeg Church. Um, it's unusual that it's shared graveyard with Protestants on the left. That was on the right. A fantastic little church. Um, it's Church of Ireland. If you go in and look at the, look at the windows, especially, they're really, really fantastic. And another holy well. This one is Saint Sidness. And people tie up all kinds of little things. I suppose an offering and remembrance. To me, uh, I don't know. Leave no trace. Oh, thank you, Sylvia, host of Ochnasheen, the best B&B &B in Tipperary, to be sure. Top of the morning to you, coming to you from outside Tipperary, heading north on the Ireland Way, a 1,000 kilometer pilgrimage hike in memory of my Irish parents, Dick and Eileen Murphy, and a little list of others whose names I've been given to bring and bless on this journey. It's day 14, and I had a great rest period. I had a nice tour guide in Tipperary, I put my feet up for lots of the time. I did have a, I did have a tummy scare, but I think 
that's only from the Chinese food and the lots of extra hot spicy peppers that were in it. Enough said. Starting my second week on the Maltine Way, pack is very heavy coming out of town with food for five days. So here we go, feet recovered, knees not bad at all, and energy is good. P.S. In case you haven't noticed, the weather is gorgeous. And I had heard that spring was the best time for Irish weather, and so far it certainly is true. That's the Church of the Immaculate Conception outside of Donahill. I'm finally off the roads after a couple of hours outside of Tipperary and uh, really happy to be back on green again. As part of my pilgrimage, I committed that I would make a, an offering of prayer in every church, that I wouldn't pass a church without attempting to go in. <laughs> but every time I do, it just brings back the absence of my parents. But I still do. I go in. I'm filled with joy and gratitude. And then comes the sadness. Well, I still have five to six weeks to go. Maybe I'll work my way through to just the joy by the end. How about these cows? I swear every one of them is looking at me. What are y'all looking at? Never seen somebody sad before? Okay, okay. Holy cow, am I ever glad that fence is there. That one little string. Oh, there's the bull. Oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to keep moving. They all came. Oh, are you coming this way too? <laughs> there they come. <laughs> Bye, girls. And the bull. I'm in an open cow pasture. Just making sure they're all asleep or resting from the sun under trees on the, on the far side. And they saw me, but they didn't move. Thank goodness. <laughs> and this is the kind of situation where you need the map, the app, the book, <laughs> some research. So I'm going to do just that, pause, check, and see which way to go. Hello, my little yellow friend. This way, you say. The route on the Maltine Way is very well marked. It just has not been used very much, I don't think. Like, even the styles are really overgrown with thistle and other things, but I particularly notice the thistle because it wants to sting me all the time. I'm not alarmed by it anymore. I was the first time. Okay, where's the next marker? Hmm. Ah, well, this is much easier. Going through the pastures and you can't see your footing and it's just full of cow divots and you can't tell where these big pits are and where they aren't. Bye bye Galti Mountains. Look at the, these are just wild rhododendrons. Now, um, Jimmy was saying they're a real annoyance because they choke everything else out, but visually they're just so pretty. We interrupt this lovely forest stroll with a stile over an electric fence and a field with cows and or are they all bulls i don't see any cows and there 
is my next style. So I'm just gonna do head down and head for the style. Oh, my legs are destroyed. I should have put my pant legs on for coming through here. So many thistles and prickles and things that I don't know I rubbed up against. And now I gotta go through this waist deep growth Maybe chest high, almost. Let's do a little trail maintenance while I'm here. Oh my gosh, look at this. This is thigh high. Anyway, I'll find my way. I always do. This is Kappa White, a pretty little village. I just have to find somewhere to give me refill on water before I head up into the hills for the night. Leaving Kappa White, it's about 5 p.m. It's been uh, a hot day. So I drank all two liters that I started with and I just downed a full liter of ice cold, fresh orange juice and finally had my lunch. I wasn't hungry for it earlier, but I did make sure I had a protein bar and, and some potato chips in the middle of the day. Probably all the sweating made me hanker for something salty. I've rested for about a half an hour and now it's gonna be up, up, up into the hills. Gotta find a wild camp spot, but only gonna go about five or six K now. So should be setting up camp by seven. And hopefully there's a decent spot and it's not overgrown forest.